Welcome to Coding Locker, guys. This is part two of Stencil Tutorial for Beginners. So in the part one, we have seen the practical part I'm talking about. We have seen that how we can create the component. We have created that component and how this component can be reused in different applications. Just one example we have seen where we created .NET application, .NET web form application and in what on an HTML page, we rendered this component. So this is the next part. And today we'll focus on the styling and few of the things. A few of the things when I say it's like, Whatever we are going to do in upcoming videos, like the HTTP request to a data binding. So I'll, I'll create some sort of structure and we'll continue on that structure in the upcoming videos, right? So let's start with the CSS. <clears throat> so in the stencil web component, it gives you three options in order to apply the styles. The first one, one is the style. And this with this one, you can provide the inline CSS for your component. But this is something we know from the beginning, not in the stencil, from the beginning that inline CSS are not recommended and we should not never use this. But again, we have an option and the stencil just continue by providing this inline style. The next we have style URL. So what happens, we are in a world of web components, right? So you create multiple web components, each component has its own CSS, right? And what, what at some times what you need that you want to uh, take the CSS of different component into your component. Let's suppose I have two components. This is my card. Let's say you have my student component, right? My, um, any employee component, and you want to use that CSS as well. So one thing is what you can do, you can copy that CSS here, right? And make use of that CSS, but it would actually do the duplicacy, it will actually with the duplicacy of the code. We want to avoid this. And so what next option gives you the style URLs in what this some this is some sort of collection in what you can pass the multiple uh, CSS names and you should be good with this. The third option is the style URL, my card CSS, which we are going to use. So now let's provide some CSS. So it should give us at least some sort of feed like uh, a card and we'll also create the structure what we I'm not going to focus on a CSS, right? So I'll just directly paste it. Let's look at the browser. We do not need to, <clears throat> excuse me, run the npm start command once again. So this is already in a running state. We have some uh, border and class shape, oh, sorry, card shape. Now, uh, one thing, okay, we all know uh, that this is, uh, this is a JSX which is uh, derived from React. This stencil has derived from React one. And uh, in the previous uh, part, we have understood about something about this one. So let me do for uh, one more thing here. So you can see that right now this is div and we are simply returning this. But what if, if I want to return multiple divs? And I do see, do this. The reason, uh, the thing is that we cannot do this because JSX does not allow you to do so. Same in React, same in Stencil. If you still want to do, you have to wrap this inside a parent wrapper. So this is something you have to do. So you should always have just one root component, right? Now next is, what is this? This is just JSXs. So what you can do, you can store this JSX into some sort of uh, variable. So let me create uh, let me content equals to so we are going to focus on just a creation of a structure so maybe like this and here you can cut this paste here and return this main content alt shift and f just to format the things since we have just one div, so that bracket has been removed automatically by the formatting. We do not have any change in the output, but this is the another way you can return the dynamic com content if you want to. And if you, and, and actually we want. So what I want, I want to create, uh, uh, what I can say, some sort of different buttons here. Let's say stencil button, react and angular. And on the click of that button, I should have some another wrapper, right? I should see that wrapper. And then uh, that wrapper is, should be responsible for calling one API and then gets a response from the server, maybe the number of users, number of uh, inputs, whatever. So this is for what, uh, for this. Next, we'll create another component which would act as a uh, sorry, child component of this parent component. And later on, we'll have the, uh, what we say, different component. 
uh, which would act as a sibling of the component and we'll see that how the communication happens uh, between those so at first let me provide the structure a bit and for that again let me provide what all i already have which is the react content this is simply a variable instead of where we are using that since stencil uses the typescript so in the react content this is the hello from react and live users will fetch something from the uh, what we say the api and this is the button on click of that button we will call the api and similarly let me add one more thing uh, the stencil content so this is my stencil content again it has some uh, class and the boxes and then it will again make a call and the main content would now look like this so instead of this hard coding thing what i'm doing i am saying you have to write a main content main content will have two buttons one is the stencil one is the react one and it is rendering the render uh, react content and the stencil content both since they are variable and we are using these in the curly braces and at last we are returning main content so let me control uh, do a control s here and go to the browser and see what change we have here we are we have two buttons right these are the two buttons which we created then we have some react on some sense let's provide some css at first and then we'll focus on further what structure i need again just for the css i will not invest more time directly i'll copy the css what i have so the first one css is the card custom so the custom card which is uh here we are the card custom that is the stencil and in the react one so i have provided the class for this one next uh, i should provide the some styling for the button as well we have used some buttons the react one and the stencil one so just to differentiate react and the stencil buttons i have added this color as well so let me control s and it is compiling and we already have the reference of the css we should see some yeah we have something now what next i want next i want when i click on this stencil i should load this stencil oh, sorry this is stencil component when i click on react then i should be able to load this react component at the same time i don't i don't want to see both of the components right next when i click on this get react user button it should call the react api react microservice api or whatever the service you have similarly for stencil and display the live users here and you can see uh, some have some space on the right hand side side here further i'll add another child component and here outside of the border again i have right content right space available for the sibling component so this is how we are going to progress and that is all for um, today's part we have provided some sort of css some stru structure next we'll continue on what we have discussed now so that is all for this video uh, thank you for being at coding locker if you have any query or doubt for stencil please email me or please uh, comment in the uh, in the channel a uh, video i'll be happy to answer of those queries thank you for being at coding a local guys have a nice day